May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our salvation. Amen. What are the threads of connection which bring you here this evening? What brings you to remember a prince and a duke? What moves you to pray for the queen and her family? For some, it is loyalty. This is what you do, and there is no other place that you would rather be. For some, along with this, there will be many other threads of connection. My father was born a couple of months after the Queen. He served in the Royal Navy in World War II off Burma. So when Lord Mountbatten of Burma, Prince Philip's uncle, was assassinated in 1979, we sat as a family and watched his funeral service. Like many British-born people, there was a thin but important thread of connection to the story of the royal family. For my father, it was Burma, from which was born a particular form of respect and allegiance. We see this echoed with, for many with the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. For some, it is through a wartime affiliation for others, it's through the award scheme for youth. For others, again, it's through the Order of Australia, each bringing a warm sense of connection. For some who've gathered tonight, it's years of carefully reading the royal stories in the news, owning them as the story of the Queen of Australia and her family. Some of you will remember seeing the Queen and the Prince on their visit to Newcastle or on another royal tour. The Anglican Church of Australia also experiences this thin thread. Our sister church is the Church of England, where Queen Elizabeth is the head of the church. By her command, bishops are appointed, some of whom take their place within her parliament. We look to the Sea of Canterbury as the critical point of connection knowing that the Archbishop of Canterbury takes office with a royal mandate. Whatever has brought you here this evening, whether it be a thick or thin thread of connection, it is good to be here to honour a life, to pray for those who mourn, and to seek God's blessings on the nations of the Commonwealth. In the official prayers of the Church of England and often in this church, we have prayed for Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, since 1947. It is in such a way that we gather this evening to pray. The service expresses Christian sentiment and Christian hope. Christians know the fullness and completeness of death. It is why we mourn and why Jesus offers specific blessing to those who mourn. Christians believe that there will be a time when those who have died in faith will one day resume a bodily form in which they know and are known. We base this faith on the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead in such ways as he could walk and talk, breathe and eat, cook and sit. As Jesus died and rose again, bearing on his body the marks of crucifixion, so we believe that in time we will die and rise again. In time, heaven and earth will meet. The cosmos will be reordered and abound with resurrected life. In time. In time. Until that time, those who have died are held close by God who we know, name as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Those who have died know God's presence and God's love. Each one, carrying the mark of faithful response to God, waits in God's care and keeping for what will seem like a twinkling of the eye until the fullness of the revelation of God's love for all created things. 
when everything will be restored and recreated to the fullness of God's desire for them. This is the promise of Jesus Christ. This is the inheritance made real for Christians in their baptism and through communion. It is the hope grafted into the heart of all Christians. Our prayer in this faith becomes simple but profound. May Philip and the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. As we pray this prayer, we commit ourselves to the work of making real God's kingdom such that God's way is known on earth as it is in heaven. With our hearts set on fire in the reality that heaven and earth can meet each other, we play our part in making it true. We know ourselves to be ambassadors of the resurrection and make real the possibilities of new life whenever and whenever we can. For the poor, for the sick, the lonely and depressed, for the imprisoned and captors, for refugees, for the hungry and the homeless, for the whole creation. We see that Philip, Prince and Duke gave himself to such work. There are many who celebrate and others who critique what he did. Much of his work was there to be seen by others and some simply went by unobserved. Christians know the reality of God's judgment but are at peace because the assessment of how well we have lived our vocation to be bearers of God's image in love, mercy and justice belongs to God alone. In keeping with the prayers which express our love for all who have died, we, now, we know that we can ask that their memory may be a blessing among us or the good of their example may be preserved amongst us. So tonight, knowing the vulnerabilities of our own life, we celebrate the life of one faithfully lived and commit ourselves, commit to reignite in ourselves the way of goodness, the way of God. May Philip and all the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. May their memory be a blessing among us and may the good of their example be preserved among us. Amen. <laughs>